Quick Shots, a short format archery podcast for everyone. Hey everyone, welcome back to Quick Shots. I'm your host, Mick Chambers. I'm here with Keith Harnish from uh, Pennsylvania, but more importantly, from Lancaster Archery Supply Classic Crushed It uh, Longbow Outlaw Champion. Um, so, hey, Keith, how are you, buddy? Very good, very good, thanks. Oh, well, I, I would I would hope you're good. I, I just, I don't, I don't, you're in a different world than I am, apparently, because <laughs> I, I, I don't, I have a longbow. I have a long, I, I hate to tell people that, but I just, I'm not shooting the, it like you, your lights out, man. How long have you been shooting longbow? Uh, probably, I probably switched pretty much dedicate just longbow about three years ago. Okay. I know we're, we're going to kind of go off script a little bit here. So, so tell me what, why would you do that? Why would you, what were you shooting before? Uh, kind of a mix of everything. Uh, I had some recurves. I had some ILS stuff. Uh, I toyed with bare bow for a very brief period of time. Uh, I've always liked longbows. I just, the shape of them, how they shoot, just uh, from uh, probably maybe too many Robin Hood movies as a kid. I don't know, but uh, I just always had a had a thing for longbows. So I, a couple of years ago, I just decided that, you know, that's, that's what I enjoy shooting. That's what I'm going to stick with. Yeah, I, um, so we're going to get into what you're currently shooting, but I, do you have you, some people pick up longbows? At least I did when I originally picked up a longbow. I just assumed that I was going it was going to rattle the uh, cavities, fillings out of my mouth. <laughs> but it's not the yeah. case. It's really not the case anymore, is it? No, I think, and you know that that perception kind of goes back to the old ASLs, you know, the Howard Hill, Howard Hill, Howard Hill style bows. Yeah. Um, but even those have gotten much better over the years. The Boyers are, are getting better about the limb timing and, and how they build them. So I, I don't think they're, they rattle the teeth out of your head like they used to. Now I haven't shot, you know, a, a modern ASL, um, you, know, you know, specifically like a uh, uh, St. Patrick Lake longbow. Yeah. You know, he yeah. seems to be the kind of the predominant ASL guy these days. Uh, I'd love to shoot one. I haven't shot one yet. Um, but, um, but yeah, I think they've, I think they've gotten much, much better. Yeah. Well, I, I, I have seen other people shoot them and shoot them really well. You know, um, Josh Miller shoots, shoots yeah. one, uh, he shoots it really well too. But, uh, you tell us about what kind of longbow you shoot. So for the classic, I shot a timber point Medusa. Um, it's a big, heavy riser. Um, it weighs a ton. You hand it to people who've never held one and they, they about, you know, fall over with how heavy that thing is. It's, it's five or six pounds, which for a longbow is, is stupid heavy. Yeah. Um, 70 inches long. It's uh, at my draw, 27 inch draw. It's uh, 37 pounds on the fingers. Yeah. So that's pretty, that's pretty standard for indoor bear bow, but you're shooting, are you shooting wood arrows? Yep. Yep. Shot the wood arrows. So you, okay. You're just making it harder on yourself. Uh, <laughs> now, now, can I ask a question? Can I ask a quick sure. question? So on this, and, and it, it might not sound too trad, but, um, do you shoot carbon arrows out of that? Uh, I, out of some other long bows I did, and I, I resisted going the wood route for a long time because I just didn't want to be bothered with it. It just seemed too much to deal with. I don't want to straighten them, I, you know, how to get them tuned. You know, some people say you can't bear shaft from other people say you can. I just didn't really want to be bothered with it. For the longest time, I did shoot carbons out of my long boats. And then uh, uh, this year, I, I previously, I dabbled with, with wood. I shot wood at Lancaster uh, last year and I shot wood at uh, US Nationals last year. Uh, but that was really about it. As soon as I was done with those shoots, I went back to carbon. Uh, but this year, I thought, you know, if we're going wood, we're going all the way. And that's, that's all I shoot now. I just shoot my woodies. Oh, that's cool. And um, who? Give, give a little shout out to who? Who do you get arrows from? Who do you get your? Uh, Lost Nation Archery. Lost Nation. Where are they out of? Um, that's a good mm-hmm. question. I, I honestly, I'm not sure. Um, okay. We'll, we'll Midwest somewhere, I think. Um, 
But okay. yeah, I kind of stumbled upon them. Uh, I went on one of the popular archery forums uh, when I was looking to get into woods. And yeah. one of the big problems with wood is is they're heavy, you know, compared to what you can get a carbon to. And That's right. for 3D, that becomes an issue because you're a misjudge of two or three yards with a heavy arrow. It, you know, it's not even just a bad score. It could be end up being a miss. So I wanted to get as light a cedar arrow as I could. So I, I looked up a bunch of the advertisers on that site that that dealt with wood arrows contacted them all and said hey i'm looking to get you know a, a finished weight on an arrow uh somewhere in that you know 400 grain or or just under range is anybody able to do that and the lost nation is the only one that got back to me and said yeah we can we can do that and uh, they made a set up and they've been fantastic with every batch i get from them they're within three grains of one another in weight uh, they all fly beautifully. I have to do very little straightening. They stay straight. So I've been, I've been very, very happy with them. Yeah, it, it is. A, it, so that's interesting. So I'll, we'll put something up about Lost Nation here um, uh, because I think that's cool. And I, Trad Tour was advertising. They had really, really light uh, headway or, or points on their site. Have, yeah. you seen, have you seen any, do you know anything about that? Uh, I, I saw them, I think they're 52 grain, 56 grain, something yeah, like that, which super is light. pretty light. Yeah. yeah. Um, mine, my arrows are spined at 35 to 40 pounds. Um, and they're cut to 29 inches to the base of the point, which stiffens them up a little bit. I'm shooting a 75 grain tip and, and they, they're coming in right between 390 and 395. That's what they wow. the finished weight on them. So for a wood arrow, it's very light. Wow, that's crazy. That's like a carbon weight. It's like yeah, getting getting down to the carbon weight. Um, what? So, talk to me a little bit about why that's important. Again, so, well, um, I know for three D, but what about for? So you've already mentioned three D that you know because mm -hmm. you need a light arrow because you can't misjudge distance, right? It helps you keep mm -hmm. it in the ten ring. Um, but uh, what about indoor at twenty yards? Is that important there too? Uh, I don't think as much. Now, I, I got really, really lucky. So these wood arrows I had gotten, I got for my outdoor bow, uh, which is a Java Man Impala Express. Nice. Uh, that was 42 pounds. Yeah. Um, and these are a hair weak. They, they go where they're supposed to. They have a little bit of a wiggle when you shoot them. But, you know, again, I, I just didn't want to keep screwing around with them. It gave me the sight picture I like. It's, it gives me point on about 24 yards, which is about perfect. That way about, you know, I'm, I'm st I still have my arrow on the target when I gap it. It's just about all the distances I need to shoot. Mm -hmm. um, and when I got this bow, this is actually a used bow. I got it from a friend of mine. Um, he had a timber point. He sent me a text a little while ago of the one that I have now. And he said, hey, look what I picked up. And I said, hey, if you ever decide you, you want to let it go, <laughs> let me know. And a couple of weeks later, he says, I like my other one better. It's, it's yours if you want it. Wow. So uh, I shot it and uh, I was bouncing back and forth between that and my Java man. And it's so heavy. I just wasn't sure I liked it. And I thought, well, the only way I'm going to know is if I just shoot a scoring round and, and see what it does. I shot the highest score I've ever shot. Uh, I haven't matched that score yet, but I, yeah, here's your money. I'll take the bow. Um, <laughs> and when he had talked to me about it, I'm like, I don't know if I want to buy a bow right now. And, you know, and uh, I thought, well, my arrow's probably going to be spine right. I don't want to go. I'm not going to go through all that. So that'll be my excuse. You know, I don't want to get new arrows. And I, and these arrows just fly like absolute darts out of it. So I got That's really cool. lucky. And the sight picture it gives me. Uh, the Medusa is not a fast bow. It is slow, but it's perfect for indoor. And uh, I'm almost exactly point on with that setup. So oh, uh, I get a little bit of the gold sticking out above my above my arrow tip when I'm looking down at the arrow, uh, and that works out. That works out great. So I got really lucky with with how everything worked. Yeah, that's perfect. That is perfect. Um, yeah, and the extra weight helps you to is a little bit more forgiving, right? Um, yeah, it, what I found is it, when you when you when you get everything set and you get settled and you have the sight picture you want, it doesn't have the the quiver and the movement that a lighter bow will. And if you if you yooks a little bit, you know, if you yip when you're yeah. when you're up, it doesn't throw it off as far, so it's not as difficult to get back back on target. So the the heavy weight of that bow 
definitely makes a difference for for I think probably for everything, but you really notice it in indoor. Yeah, that's cool. That that's really good. So, but outdoor, you're still are you gonna shoot that again for outdoor or no? Nah, no. When, nah. when, when you say outdoor, we're talking three D. Three D, yeah. Yeah, and you're talking max yardage for longbow is. Well, it depends what you're shooting. Like IBO is 25 yards. Um, if you're going to try out for the World Archery Team, um, they shoot out to 30 meters, which is 33 yards. Wow. So, um, so it, it depends what class you're shooting. Uh, but most longbow around here, uh, wood arrows, you're, you're going to shoot at 25 yards max. Yeah, so that's uh, so it kind of sets up pretty good for you know, indoor setup. Not too bad. Right, especially if you're 24 yards um, point on. That is yeah. really cool. That that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. That's pretty cool. What do you do for those really close in targets? You know, every so you come around the bend and you're like, oh, shit, there's an eight yard target. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm under. You know, it's it's um, at that distance. If is you know, for your example of eight yards, I'm probably about eight inches low. So depending on what the target is, I may be off the target um, or right at the right at the belly depending on the size of the animal you know I, the more i talk to you the more i feel like you're you are a scientist when it comes to this <laughs> have you been like no do, do you need to be do you need to like i'm legit legitimately asking i have long bows up here by the way um and i buy wood arrows and if they fly straight great if they don't yep. I, I still shoot them because that's what i got you know i don't know the ins and out of two like you might be scaring some people off a longbow, right? And 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 uh, and I'm not saying that in a bad way. I'm just saying that I think that people don't actually understand the amount of what I want people to understand is the amount of effort, energy, knowledge that you need to be at your level, at an elite longbow level. Um, because you you do, I Keith, I. That w wasn't really a question in there, but I mean, I, I, at your level, I, I guess the question is, run that down for us. Run that down for us. Like at your level, what are you doing? How are you getting your setup together? Um, so I've been doing it long enough that I kind of know that, um, well, I guess I'll start, I gap shoot. Uh, and I started gap shooting probably six or seven years ago. For, for I've, I've been shooting traditional archery for, um, well, I probably started in about my mid twenties, um, but I took about a 10 year break cause my target panic was so bad, um, that it just, it wasn't stop, fun anymore. Stop, stop, stop. So, okay. No, 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 no. I gotta stop. We gotta, we gotta talk about that. You took a 10 year break. Is that what I heard you say? Yeah. Yeah. Because your target pant, you just go, I, this is bullshit. Yep. I, I cannot stand yep. this. I can't get the tip on the gold. Uh, I, yep. I quit for 10 years. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was because it, it just wasn't fun. And and I got into traditional archery because I wanted archery to be fun again. I shot compound for a couple of years and that was not fun. Yeah. Um, it, it was too much stuff to fiddle with. If you miss, you're not shooting right. Did my string stretch or my my cams out of time? Did this move Did that move? It just it just wasn't fun. So that's how I, that's what how I got into traditional archery. And, and, and I, I wanted it to be fun. And, and it got I mean, I wasn't just missing the target at 20 yards. I would miss the target nail at 20 yards. It was, my collapse was horrendous and it just, it just wasn't fun. So I put everything down. I'm, I'm done with this. And, and I, I got the itch again, you know, I missed it. I missed uh, a lot of the, the, not just the shooting, but the people that you're, that you're around when you're, you know, shooting single string. Uh, and I, I just wanted to get back into it. So at that time I thought like, I got to make a lot of changes and and part of that was no more split finger corner of the mouth stuff uh i'm gonna shoot three under i'm gonna get a higher anchor where i can actually aim i can see my arrow and and work from there um but i've been doing it long enough to kind of know what length arrow works for me what to get the sight picture i want and you know i need about a 30 inch arrow uh to to get you know somewhere in that ballpark and that'll give me about the sight picture that i want to see mm -hmm. there's not a huge difference i don't think between a lot of bows anymore you know you everybody's not everybody a lot of people are chasing the speed thing with traditional bows you know I, I, oh this thing's so fast this thing's so fast well you you chronograph them and they're all within five eight maybe 10 feet per second of one another mm -hmm. and i'm not sure how much 10 feet per second actually how much difference that actually makes in in what your sight picture is 
I think what we should be going after is shootability. How yeah. comfortable is that bow for me? Yeah. Uh, you know, how's the, is it smooth back to my draw length, you know, and, and can I hold it steady? Those kind of things. I think that's a, a much more important, uh, uh, measurement thing. You're exactly a measurement to go after rather than just speed. So, you know, with just about any bow I'm going to pick up, if I have a 30 inch arrow, I know my point on is going to be somewhere in that, you know, probably 22 to 25 yard mark and you know that's kind of where you, you start from there um but I, you know I, you can like everything else you can get as ocd with it as you want and uh, and that's kind of why i didn't i didn't go the barabelle route there, there's too much to fiddle with and i think he you know, i would drive myself absolutely nuts you know well if i move this weight up top a little more if i add an extra ounce here maybe i need to put this in the back and it's just it's it's not why I got into traditional archery. That just doesn't do it for me. Uh, maybe someday it will, but but right now that's just not where I want to be. I kind of bare bows uh, really is taking off, and people a lot of people are yeah. are, are getting the bare bow. But I'm also hearing that same story from other people that you just said. Um, you know, I maybe I don't want to be in bare bow. Um, you know, and and you know we get people trying like there's major guys that content creators like me. Um, uh, uh, Greg is, is, um, um, a fan or, uh, on the, was on the show, uh, here and he, uh, tried barebow for, you know, several months and he was good, man. He was shooting like, uh, two fifties and stuff like that. And that's pretty decent scores, you know, uh, when you compare yourself against everyone else and he's like, ah, I don't, he said the exact same thing that you just said. I mean, it basically said that it's, was, it's not fun. It's not, I enjoy the wood bow. I enjoy that feeling. I, you yeah. know, I, I I agree with you, and I and I actually started shooting longbows a lot more uh, myself and um, a friend of my, our our friend here uh, Jeff Hale, who is here in Kansas. He he's just like ah, you know what this is so much more fun shooting a longbow. Yeah. And I was like, and he, he let me borrow um, uh, a, 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 a one of Coffee's bows and uh, the Jabba mm -hmm. bow, and that's what I've been shooting. I've been shooting that bow, and I I like it. It's a it's a good shooting bow. And, it is. And it's comfortable. All those things you said, it's just like, oh, this feels kind of like an uka limb to me, yep. you know, uh, for barebow guys, right? Yeah. And I think that's exactly what you said, how it gets back there. Hey, okay, so uh, let's talk a little bit about Lancaster. Let's talk, first of all, I want to mention the uh, 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 Longbow Outlaws. And mm -hmm. again, they were on the show too. Uh, you can go check that out if you want. But um, the uh, Longbow Outlaws, Santo has been trying to drive these this this community uh so that, that you know at lancaster at the classic they can be represented and honestly keith i don't know how you feel and i want to get your opinion on this uh, huge huge success this year mm -hmm. I, I just think they they um there was gifts you know archery geek put in you know a hundred dollars to fifty dollars to the top fifty dollars to the top uh the overall top uh, fifty dollars to the top male fifty dollars to the uh, top female because I think it's important. I think it's important that you guys keep coming out and we just keep encouraging people to come out. Will you ever get a class at Lancaster? I don't know. What the, well, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to pan out, but I will tell you that you, you, you shot an amazing round. This is the first time ever two people made the cut, right? You and Kenneth. Yep. yep. Um, you guys have always been great shooters, uh, but uh, I mean, in in recent in recent months or recent years, um, so I wasn't too surprised with that. But I want to talk to you about the eliminations. Take me through. You've just scored five, what was it five forty four? Sorry, help me. No, out. I shot a five twenty four. Five twenty five was my qualifying score. Five twenty five. Five twenty five. So that for people. People might not know, right? So 525 is two 60 arrow ends right. combined, right? So what? Right. So your first end, what what did you score on your first end? Do you happen to remember? Uh, I think, I think low 260s. I think <laughs> that's so good, man. <laughs> and then what did you what did you get on your second? And so I guess you would do do the math. Yeah, right? whatever the math works out to. I don't yeah. I don't quite remember. It was it was pretty close to. I was pretty consistent. I did gain a few points my uh, my second end. I did do a little bit better on the on the second uh, the second batch of thirty. Um, but uh, yeah, whatever whatever the number has to work out to to come five twenty five. 
So is that um, it was? You think that was nerves? Like your first, your first, your first round was? Did you have any nerves going into this? Um, yeah, I was probably more nervous the first day than I was the second day because I knew that the first day I had I had some goals going into it, and uh, the one was I wanted to win the, the Longbow Outlaws, and the second was I wanted to, I wanted to make the cut. So, and I knew that both of those were well within my ability if I didn't screw it up. Yeah. Um, so, so I, I did feel a little bit more. I did have more pressure on myself. I think that that first day, um, just because I knew that you know the the goals that I wanted, I you know I, I should be able to achieve those if I you know if I just keep my head. Yeah, what's your what have going into the tournament? Mm -hmm. uh, what was your sort of your average score? when you were scoring uh practice i was shooting uh high 260s low 270s very consistently unreal unreal that is with the longbow wood arrows i mean i can't even imagine doing that with a bare bow uh and most people can't most people can that's 270s is elite bare bow I, I would put people no i would i, I like i think people who are shooting 270s are, are like that's that or sorry wait a second let me let me are you talking Lancaster scoring or? No, no, Vegas scoring. Vegas scoring, yeah, which no means 11. which means no 11s. So right. if you're in the 270s and you're in bare bow, you're doing fantastic. If you're in the 270s with a long bow, you're in a different world. Um, so I may, so that puts you up there again with the Demer who's shot the, who, who has the, 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 the record, right? The national record. Yeah. So anyway, okay, okay, okay. So now you made it through, yep. you, you, you won the, longbow outlaw thing right you got that yeah. past you um yeah. kenneth is kind of uh, you know he's there right you know and so he's, he's in eliminations take me through the different elimination rounds so um so i, I was kind of screwed i'd never been in this situation before so and i left the house without checking my my email um i didn't i didn't know how this works I said, i'm just going to get to lancaster early uh, had I checked my email, I would have been a lot more calm. I had no idea if they were going to give us practice rounds before we started eliminations or not. So I was in a little bit of a panic. So I'm going to use this as a public apology to Flan Gerard. Okay. So I go through all the practice ranges and they're all packed. I, I just can't find an open bail. So I go to the one and Fawn and Spanky are, are uh, warming up and I'm standing there and I'm standing there and standing there. And I, I'm just not getting, getting no bail. What I should have done in hindsight is asked. Yeah. But I just kind of inserted myself. <laughs> so, <laughs> Fawn, I'm sorry. I was in panic mode. I didn't know we were going to get two rounds of practice. So, yeah. sorry. So, I kind of jumped in. I shot a couple of arrows, pulled them, and, and I was gone again. But, uh, but yeah, that was that was not good. So, I learned well, a lot through that. Well, playing with Vaughn's head before. Yeah. Shoot it okay. <laughs> Hey, shoot it okay. Spanky's probably pissed at you, though. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. I didn't shoot Spanky's butt, so maybe he's all right with me. I don't know. <laughs> oh, so, I was uh, I was hoping a little bit more for Spanky this time around. I mean, he's got yeah. Rushmore. He's all right. He's all right. He's all right. Okay. All right. So you get there. You you mess up. <laughs> yeah. So I so I finally figure out where I'm supposed to be. Then after I I've shot my uh, shot, Fawn's practice round and. Uh, Get to the right spot uh, on the line, and uh, then they start, you know, figured out where I'm supposed to be. I, I ran into, um, I guess the other long uh, Ken was down there, so he and I started talking. He helped me out, told me what what target face I was on, and everything. And uh, I met Jeff. I shot against Jeff uh, Jeff Ogilvy, Ogilvy uh, yeah. Love yeah, Jeff. who I I have heard his name. Super nice guy. I couldn't have been more cordial. We had a we had a great, you know round that was that was really enjoyable um but uh I, you know at that point i didn't have a lot of nerves because i i i, I accomplished my goals and, and getting beyond that was just kind of icing on the cake so um started shooting and uh and it was not as solid as what i would have liked but it was pretty good and i was pretty happy with how i was shooting for the most part uh, we went back and forth a little bit. You only shoot 12 hour arrows in the elimination. Um, so you don't have a, if you slip behind, you don't have a ton of room to, to catch back up, but, right. um, but I ended up edging them out by, by three. Um, so that was, uh, and, and then it kind of, then it kind of hit me like, holy crap. And I look at the scores and I'm thinking, I'm not that far under everybody else. 
Yeah. Yeah, your scores, your 12 arrow score was not yeah. under. No, you, you posted a really good first elimination 12 arrow, 12 arrow score. So I, I when I saw that and I was like, this is the Lumbo guy. And we, I mean, we were going crazy, right? And we were, we were putting some stuff up and we're going like, this is a longbow guy. Not only a longbow guy, he's a wood arrow longbow guy. <laughs> and we're like, what? <laughs> that's not that's not true. That can't be. Because you're not beating Jeff Ogilvy with wood arrows in a, bu- in a wooden bow. But you did. But you did. <laughs> but you did. I love Jeff. We love Jeff. But so, okay, so now you're on to the next. Okay, so you came in seated uh, not very high. Uh, I was about, about middle. I was yeah. 31, 34, something like that. So it was almost dead middle. Right. And then Ogilvy must have been like at like 20 something or something, 26 or something like that. Right. I, I think they folded the the seeds. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm not so, sure where he qualified, but yeah, he, it's he was important. pretty close to me. It's important for the story. I want to build this up a, bit, a little bit because, because, <laughs> okay. So you came in like 34th, let's say out of like 50 archers or whatever it was. Right. So, Six, so you, 64, 60, 64, 64, yep. sorry. So you came in middle of the pack, you, you, you shot against someone that was better than middle of the pack. And then you beat that person, Jeff Ogilvy, you went on next, next step. What happened next? So again, because I hadn't been there before, I had no idea how this works. So, uh, he and I, Jeff and I were targets A and B. And then, uh, for those that have never watched Lancaster, there's four, four target faces on a, on a target, butt. So he and I shot the upper two and then uh, another fellow that I'm sorry, can't remember your name and Eric Johnson were shooting the, the lower two. Mm-hmm. I knew who Eric Johnson was. I've watched enough uh, of the uh, classic finales on YouTube to know who Eric was. Uh, but I didn't realize that the winner of A and B is going to face the winner of C and D. Yeah. Otherwise I probably would have been a lot more nervous or completely relaxed because it's Eric yeah. Johnson. What chance do I have against Eric Johnson? You know, this is, yeah, this is yeah. just going to be a, a slaughter. So, uh, so then, uh, I won and I kind of had to collect myself a little bit. And then, uh, I see Eric, Eric putting our target faces up and, uh, and our names. And I thought, Oh, okay. I got to shoot against Eric. So, uh, and you're, there's really no break between once everybody gets their targets back up, you're, you know, you're back up and you're, you're shooting again. And uh, it, it was kind of interesting. I was I was doing pretty good, and uh, and he anybody who's watched Eric and Eric's one of the best in the world. So this is nothing against Eric. And the fact that you know he has some pretty serious target panic issues. When you watch him in the finals, he oh God, yips. Yeah. yeah, he, he yips. yips bad. And the, and the, to be able to shoot at his level, it, it's unbelievable. It's just yeah. absolutely unbelievable. Um, but when I was shooting against him, you know he. He would yip and he'd let down and you know it's it's just typical eric and i i knew that's how he shot i've seen him shoot before uh but i was kind of hanging in there and his his wife came over and started talking to me and and said you know kind of yeah he's had target panic for the past 27 years and blah 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 and, but he's the only barebow archer to ever shoot a perfect 300 and then she walked away so i guess that was to try and get in my head or i'm not sure maybe it's just making conversation i don't know i i knew that i knew who he was so it wasn't so this is how it went down this is how it went down so you first first three arrows i think you were tied or something if i recall and then you went up in the second round i think after six arrows i think you were up weren't you not i don't remember i I don't remember it was close it It was was weird it was yeah, because we were watching, and then then oh, no, you dropped down, and then, yeah. then you, could, you, could, you can't catch up. Then you couldn't catch up, and we knew it was Eric, so we were like, because we're not seeing it live, right? We're just watching the live scores come in, um, and then we're talking about it, and it was uh, we're like, holy smokes, um, this is. And I was just FYI, I might have said some inappropriate things on the Lancaster Archery page uh, live feed when they didn't reseed you guys. Because I thought that that was not, I I wanted to see you shoot up against. It shouldn't have been Eric. Like if you would have no, if you would have reseeded after the first round, you wouldn't have been shooting against the guy who went to who almost won, who shot a twelve in the yeah. in in the yeah. finals. It, it you know it, it doesn't bother me at all. I mean for one because I I look I ended up shooting a one oh eight that round that that score I actually remember mm-hmm. and. And when I got back to my friends and my wife and everything, and they were telling me that, and they started counting that, uh, had it just gone by score, I would have been 13th. 
So I would have made the cut to the final 16. So, and that's how the game at Lancaster's played. You know, it's elimination rounds. So I have no issue with it. That's, you know, that's how the game's played. Everybody has to, you know, run to the same obstacles. And and yeah. who makes the final eight is, you know, a little bit of, of luck, depending on, you know, what matchup you're fortunate enough to get. So I, it didn't it didn't bother me. It still doesn't bother me. I was, you know, really happy it went the way it did. So it's fine. Yeah, everyone's proud of you. Everyone, everyone is amazed and, and, and just blown away. But it does raise the bar for next year for the Longbow Outlaws. You know? Well, and I, I hope, you know, and I hope if, I hope, you know, there's guys sitting at home that shoot at their local tournaments with their longbows and and decide that, you know what, I can come out and do this too. And, and if you're just getting into longbow, don't worry about the wood. Just shoot carbon. Just get the Lancaster experience. You know, the, the carbon won't count towards a longbow outlaws. You won't be eligible for, you know, to win and all that. But if that's what you got and that's what you want to come out and give it a try, you know, we'd love to see you out there. I think I think there's there's guys shooting a bear bow because that's where all the competition is and they want to compete. There's just not that many people shooting longbow. But I think if we get more people into longbows, um, you will get some of these people that are tired of the fiddle factor with the bear bow and just want to get back to more simplistic archery. And I, and I think we could pick up some really good archers. Yeah. 100%. I mean, there are, there's a lot of talent. There's a lot of local talent, but they just are like, Hey, nah, I just want to shoot. You know, I, I want to shoot my local 3d tournaments and yep. I've seen it. I've seen guys that are like, no, like not in a bad way. They're nobody. They're like, you've never heard their name. You're never going to hear their name and they're, they're lights out on a 3d course, you know, yep. with a, a longbow and wood arrows, uh, just because they love, there's some fiddle and fa fiddle faddle with, I forget how you put it, uh, fiddling around with, uh, longbows too. I mean, it's, 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 yeah, it's not easy. It's, I, but I it's, mean, it's, you know, you, you set your brace height, you set your knock height and you tune your arrow. That's pretty much it. And my, my tuning of my arrow was I ordered it long. And I kept cutting it until it hit where I wanted it to hit. Once it would hit consistently down the middle, that's tuned. That's how I tuned it. I'm, you know, it, it, and I'm sure it's, you know, if I put a broadhead on that thing's going to fly, you know, all over creation, but I'm not shooting it with a broadhead. So it's, it's flying well enough. That's so it, it, you don't have to get super, you know, complex with it. You can keep it pretty simple and, and have a good setup. You know, I was always, I was, we're going to get to uh, what I want you to think about, you know, a piece of advice that you would give someone um, getting into archery, you know, um, like what would you tell them if they're just starting off and saying, I don't, it could be someone who's, who's, who's already shooting traditional archery, but you know, like what, what, can, what can you say to someone to make them what you think would make them immediately start to either love the sport more or, you know, sh score better? Um, I would say don't spend a ton of money on equipment. You don't need to go out and buy a $1,500 custom bow. If you're just getting into traditional archery, get yourself a galaxy, get yourself a Samick Sage. That's there's lots and lots of people shooting this. I saw a couple of Samick Sages at Lancaster. There's nothing wrong with that bow. It's a great way to get entered. If you're going to spend money, spend it on lessons, spend it on training. It's, it's real easy, like in any other sport, to develop bad habits real quick. And I think if you're just getting into it, you need to make sure you have a good foundation, good fundamentals, and and uh, you're not going to find that on the forums. Good Lord, stay off the forums. <laughs> you can get some horrific advice on forums. But um, find, a, find a local club, you know, where it has a good traditional group in it. Um, uh, you know, if you're near Lancaster, they offer lessons there. Uh, the push has the Tom Clum and, uh, and Joel Turner on there among, uh, I think, uh, Demer has a, a module on the push as well. There's lots of really good information out there to give you a good solid foundation. Um, just, uh, yeah, stay away from the, the form advice. Yeah. Great. Great advice. Great advice. Uh, sponsor of the channel, the Push Archery. So, you know, go check them out. And all those courses that you just mentioned, 
you know, if you really want to get into to archery, it's worth the investment. And it's not yep. a, a lot of money, and it's 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 it comes to you in such a great way that you know the yep. modules that they have. So it's very digestible. So go out there and do that. Uh, if you need a Samic Sage, uh, archerypass.com. That's our sponsor um, as well. And so you can go there. And you can get wood arrows there too. You can get the whole setup, man. You can get um, a lot of bear archery products too. Uh, yep. Okay. So are you? Um, do you have to, do you want to give a shout out to anyone or do you want to tell people how they can get in touch with you? <laughs> well, um, I'd certainly like to thank Santo for, and, uh, and Chris for everything they've done for the longbow outlaws. Had they not started that, that kind of little side bet, if we're going to call it that I wouldn't have shown up last year. Cause I, you know, I knew, and I'm one of those that I can't, if I don't have a, if I don't think I have a shot at doing well, I'm not going to do it. So I, you know, I wouldn't have gone there last year. I, I showed up with a 46 pound hunting bow and poorly tuned arrows that things were going all over the place. And, uh, and I did horribly, but it gave me the itch and the burn to want to come back and do it again. And had they not started that, I, I wouldn't have gone and I, I would have missed out on, on meeting a lot of really, really neat people and having a great experience. So first of all, thanks to them. And, uh, and the other people I want to thank is, is West Penn Archery. Um, that's the archery club I belong to. Uh, we found these guys uh, probably about two, two and a half years ago. We were just driving by, saw their sign. My wife started Googling it because she used to shoot with me, and we like finding different places to, to shoot uh, 3D uh, courses. And uh, we saw they had a trad night every Thursday. And, uh, and we went, and we've been going ever since. It's just the – awesome. The, best bunch of people and you you don't you can't shoot under pressure if you never shot under pressure and and even though it's a very relaxed group we have a great time there's lots of joke and laughing and carrying on going on but shooting in front of people it it it's pressure you know when you're going to shoot in front of somebody you don't want to look like an idiot and dealing with that and learning to shoot through that has helped my shooting tremendously um, and you know, when you do well, there becomes an expectation that you're going to continue to do well. And, and when I don't do well, they let me know about it <laughs> and it's, and it's awesome. It and it's is, awesome it because it, it, it keeps you, it keeps you working and wanting to improve. And, uh, so yeah, without, without those guys, yeah. I would have done it. Yeah. Well said. Um, my second favorite longbow archer, ar archer in the world, uh, Calvin Smock likes to say, the only yeah. way to the only way to prepare for Lancaster is to go to Lancaster. Yeah. <laughs> so, yep. you know, get out there. I mean, it's a great tournament and it produces some really amazing um, heroes in the sport like Keith. So I, I, I do appreciate <laughs> you. I know people, people laugh at that, but I don't care, man. You get, guys are doing super hero type stuff, man. It is, it is amazing. You know, there's no, it's not, you know, it's not magic. You gotta, you gotta work your butt off to get there. So, and we definitely appreciate it and we understand that. So, all right. Thank you very much for joining us, Keith. And uh, hey, no, no problem. Appreciate the opportunity, man. Yeah, that's, I mean, it was, it's been awesome, man. So everyone again, um, if you've not, uh, subscribed to our channel, go do that. Stop being weird about it. Um, it's, uh, archery geek, um, over on YouTube, go subscribe there, leave comments too. Like if you're watching this video and you don't go to the comment section, you made it this far, you don't go to the comment section and say, Hey Keith, I used to shoot with you when you were, when you had your target panic, you suck. Something like that. <laughs> Something cool like that. That would be great. That would be good. All right, everyone hunt the good stuff. We'll talk to you later. What tab are you shooting? Obviously. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, archerypass.com, for all your traditional archery needs.